factors. So we all pretend we live in this world of evidence-based medicine. The problem is, if all the, me if all the evidence is corrupt, then evidence-based medicine is also going to be corrupt. So if all your evidence is produced by pharmaceuticals, is produced by people getting paid by the sugar industry, for example, well, you're going to think sugar is fine. And we have studies that prove that um, funded studies, so if you fund a study, then you're like something like six to ten times more likely to find a result favoring your sponsor. Well, mm. that's just human nature. So we have a guy in Toronto, a Dr. Stephen Piper, who uh, is out there all the time saying sugar's good, fructose is good, it's like a health food. And then, of course, in the newspaper in the National Post uh, last year, which is our, our national newspaper, it's like, oh yeah, he takes hundreds of thousands of dollars from the sugar industry, mm. Coca-Cola and everybody. I'm like, okay. Here's the sugar industry funding the University of Toronto, which is happily taking all this cash, they're taking all this money, and producing shoddy research. The sugar company, or the pharmaceutical, or the big food company, I don't blame them at all. Because their responsibility is to sell sugary beverage. The problem is that we allow Coke to pay the University of Toronto millions of dollars, to produce crappy research. I understand this, everybody understands this. So therefore, you are not, nobody is allowed to give policemen, nobody's allowed to give judges anything. But we say, oh yeah, but if you're a big company, you can give doctors however much money you want. So you look at a journal like the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Mm -hmm. And the editors, which decide which journals get published, you know, what everything is, um, on average, they're taking each over $400,000 a year. The question is, why do we allow that to happen? You can't give uh, $400,000 to a New York Times journalist. They will get fired. But yet, when it comes to our health, we say, Hey, Dr. Stephen Piper, you can take, here's a couple, here's $500,000. Just do some research on why sugar's good for you. And he produces it, and then people come out and say, well, the evidence says that sugar's good for us. Isn't that the most ridiculous situation you've ever heard? What we have to do is we have to be on our, you know, uh, our political, we have to get political and really say, okay, we shouldn't be allowing any of this. Anybody who teaches students, medical students, uh, teaches at the university, is not allowed to take money. They pay editors of, of uh, large journals, like hundreds of thousands of dollars each, to get their research into it. The studies are all produced by drug companies, and we know that if that's the case, then it's far more likely to be biased. The first thing we should be doing mm -hmm. is saying, we need new rules. Nobody's allowed to pay uh, university professors any kind of money. You want to be a university professor, you want the privilege of teaching medical students, you get paid by the university. You don't get paid by anybody else. annotated and summarized easy to share with loved ones the description below the title for this video has these summary points from the website doctorstotrust.com you can view the summary notes and share or print the pdf of those notes